Hi, my name is Atif Darush, professor and consultant of obstetrics and gynecology. In this lecture, I'd like to address a new concept of polycystic ovarian disease management. Even before the first publication on the uh, PCOS by Stein and Leventhal in 1935, and after their publication, all doctors are and patients are concerned with this disease, regarding it as a disease of the ovaries. And all patients come to our clinics saying that I have BCOS because or whatever, and this is a problem in the ovary. And all doctors or most of doctors are directed to ovarian problems and to look to the ovary by ultrasound. And we have to know that BCOS rates have arisen in women of all age groups over time, impacting up to 26% of women worldwide. It may be associated with reproductive dysfunction, menstrual problems, infertility problems, okay. But what about other problems, other metabolic dysregulation, including insulin resistance, cardiovascular risk factors, and psychological implication? That's why some authors mention that it is a common endocrinopathy of reproductive aged women to be more wide scoped disease. Others mentioned that it is a reproductive metabolic syndrome, and this name actually is suggested in this publication, as it is a reproductive, cardiometabolic, dermatologic, and psychological disease. How to ignore the visiting gynecologists, endocrinologists, internal medicine, dermatologists, psychologists, and reproductive endocrinologists and infertility, infertility specialists. All these specialities are incorporated in the same disease. How to focus only on the ovary and to ignore the whole uh, symptoms and manifestations of this syndrome. If you look to the updated mechanisms of formation of polycystic ovarian disease, you will find some factors like genetic, epigenetic, lifestyle, neuroendocrine causes, in addition to or enhanced by or exacerbated by obesity, can lead to two important events in the body, insulin resistance and hyperandrogenism. And due to the insulin resistance and hyperandrogenism, the female will have some menstrual problems ovulatory dysfunction or subfertility. So if you focus on the ovaries or the menstruation only, you will ignore the whole algorithm, the whole cause of the, uh, or the pathophysiology of the uh, polycystic ovarian disease. And if you look to insulin resistance, you will find it in almost all obese women with PCOS and in up to 50% of normal weight women of PCOS. And insulin resistance increases insulin level, decreases glucose tolerance. In addition to hyperandrogenism, with decreased sex hormone binding, globulin, increased free testosterone, and increased LHFSH ratio, decreased FSH production. And this can lead to some manifestations, endocrinal manifestations, like abnormal GnRH pulse, pulsation, increased LHFSH ratio, abnormal ovarian function, uh, polycystic ovarian morphology by ultrasound. So if you focus only on the ovary, you will ignore the whole cycle of this disease, endocrine disease or uh, reproductive uh, metabolic disease. And don't forget that insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia is the key of this disease as an alteration of insulin signaling has been recognized as the main cause of the pathophysiology of PCOS. As insulin, uh, three main targets, all tissues of the body, including adipose tissues, skeletal muscle, and liver, will have manifestations of hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance in this disease, resulting in metabolic abnormalities, 
uh, increased visceral adipose tissue in the abdomen, adipose side dysfunction, glucose uptake decrease, lipid decomposition decrease, increased lipid accumulation, increased insulin signaling, decreased glycogen synthesis, which is the storage of glucose, decreased sex hormone binding globulin, and subsequently increased free testosterone and decreased insulin growth factor number one. All these will lead to hyperandrogenemia and hyperandrogenemia will go to pituitary and lead to this cascade of the ovarian dysfunction and increased antimalarial hormone as well. So if you understand the whole story, you will see that focusing on the ovary and focusing on the uh, 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 the uh, ovarian function and menstrual problem, this is uh, uh, looking to the story from one side only. Uh, one of the active members of investigators of the uh, BCOS is uh, Umfar, and he actually uh, supposed that there are four phenotypes of uh, BCOS, and he called it endocrine metabolic syndrome, and he classified it into four phenotypes. Uh, actually, if you look to this uh, table, you will find in the three phenotypes of this met endocrine metabolic syndrome, there is insulin resistance in addition to hyperandrogenemia. So why to consider the disease as only phenotype D, which is just oligo-ovulation uh, and BCO uh, morphology in the ovary. Why to ignore hyperandrogenemia, uh, uh, hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistance in those cases in addition to dermatologic symptoms and some risks like diabetes, hypertension, uh, in addition to infertility and ovulation. So I think this classification is practical to uh, highlight the importance of widening your scope. When you are seeing a patient of PCOS in your clinic, you have to know that it is not just looking to the ovary. Uh, phenotype D has uh, just ovarian problems, no hyperandrogenemia, no insulin resistance. But what about the three classes of the endocrine metabolic syndrome? You don't have to ignore other manifestations of this disease. <coughs> and insulin resistance is defined as suboptimal response of tissues to the physiologic amount of insulin or the excessive uh, insulin, which is hyperinsulinemia, can lead to downregulation of insulin resist resistance. The end result or the ultimate result of this uh, change in the body is insulin resistance, which is uh, ineffective, is insulin. And if normal functions, here you can see in this figure that in normal functions, the insulin level is normal if compared to the blood glucose and insulin resistance is uh, nearly less than one normal. But in pre-diabetics, the insulin resistance increases, the blood sugar increases and insulin reduction uh, also increases, but if the patient is diabetic, the insulin production decreases and blood glucose increases and insulin resistance uh, increases and becomes plateau. This means that the insulin resistance calculated by different formulas, the famous is HOMA IR, which is uh, measuring the fasting glucose multiplied by fasting insulin divided over 405, uh, this can lead to calculation of the insulin resistance. And if it is less than one, one this is normal. Less than, than two is uh, borderline. Less than three is definite insulin resistance. And we have to assess the insulin sensitivity also in our patients by, tested by GTT. The sequelae of insulin resistance is type 2 diabetes, polycystic ovarian disease, atherosclerosis, dyslipidemia, and hypertension. All these are sequelae of insulin resistance. Don't ignore insulin resistance and hyperandrogenemia in your patients. Don't focus on the ovaries only. And this is an important disease. Also, you don't have to ignore metabolic syndrome, which is increased blood sugar, increased blood pressure, increased waist circumference. And this is important. Many doctors 
weight their patients and calculate the height and weight and consider the body mass index as an indicator of this patient is uh, BCOS or no, uh, this is not uh, correct. Actually, if you weight your patient and calculate the height, this is a test of obesity. But in cases of insulin resistance, there is preferential obesity, which means that the uh, adipose tissue goes to the abdomen, uh, the, uh, if compared to the body uh, fat. Why goes to the abdomen? Due to androgen excess, which favors abdominal deposition of uh, body fat. So you have to calculate the waist circumference, not only body mass index, and the waist circumference increase uh, leads to uh, calculation of insulin resistance. Also in the metabolic syndrome, there is increased triglycerides, decreased high density lipo, uh, lipoprotein. So all these parameters increase except decreased high density lipoprotein. And this is a diagnostic criteria uh, uh, should be put in mind in the diagnosing uh, PCOS. So PCOS is not only ovarian disease, but there is insulin resistance, there is metabolic syndrome, there are th three phenotypes of PCOS should be considered and should be put in mind. In conclusion, I would say that insulin resistance has been noted consistently among women with PCOS, especially in those with hyperandrogenism, but it is not included in any of the uh, diagnostic criteria and renaming is mandatory. Thank you.